Welcome back to KT280 Tutorials and today we are going to start with ultrasonic waves and their applications. Now human ear has the ability to hear sounds ranging from the frequency 20 Hz to 20 kHz. And the sound waves below 20 Hz is known as subsonic sound whereas the sound waves having frequencies higher than 20 kHz are known as ultrasonic sound or ultrasound. These are some of the properties of ultrasound. Since they have higher frequencies, they have small wavelength. As a result, they have negligible diffraction. They are also highly directional and can travel to a long distance. Higher frequency also results in the fact that they have higher energy. Also they exhibit cavitation effect. If you are a mechanical engineer, you will learn about cavitation effect in more detail in your fluid mechanics course. There you will learn about this in turbines or motors. Here we will learn about cavitation effect caused by ultrasound. The applications of ultrasound is classified into two main categories namely low intensity application and high intensity application. The low intensity application includes echo sounding, flaw detection, thickness gauging and medical applications. High intensity application include cavitation, fatigue testing, drilling, soldering, welding. The first application is echo sounding. You may have heard of sonar technology which is sound navigation and ranging. This technology uses this formula which is very easy because you need to calculate distance say from the surface of water to the ocean flow. So the distance can be measured by multiplying the velocity of the ultrasound and time required to reflect and reach the detector. Of course, normally distance is just speed into time. However, since here the wave travels twice the distance, once from the surface of the water to the ocean floor and then reflected back from the ocean floor to the surface of the water, we have this factor of 2 here. Also, the velocity of the ultrasound is a function of salinity and the temperature. In order to include those factors, we have this formula. Here velocity uh, which you get is in meters per second and the formula is V is equal to 1510 plus 1.14 into S which is the salinity in grams per liter plus 4.21 multiplied by the temperature in degree Celsius minus 0 0.037 into square of the temperature. The next application is flaw detection. This may look similar to echo sounding. Here we have a specimen say a metal slab which is to be tested. In order to do that we place a transducer on its surface and move it along its length. In the region where there is no crack, the ultrasound emitted by the transducer moves all the way through the specimen and gets reflected from its other side and then it reaches back to the transducer. Now the time taken by the ultrasound to travel all the way through the specimen and then reach back is measured. Then as the transducer uh, moves over the crack the sound gets reflected from the crack itself. As a result, a smaller time interval is measured and in this way the crack is detected. Now other low intensity applications include thickness gauging and in the field of medicine. Suppose you have a component or a sheet metal whose thickness needs to be measured, it is very difficult to measure it using conventional methods. 
so we make use of ultrasound this is similar to echo sounding instead of the depth of the ocean we are measuring the thickness of the sheet metal in medicine many ailments like ligament sprains muscle sprains joint inflammation and osteoarthritis can be subjected to ultrasound therapy then uh, ultrasound is also used in uh, sonography and location of tumors and it also helps in uh, differentiating healthy tissues from malignant tissues now we will look into some high intensity applications the first is cavitation so this is how the process of cavitation goes suppose you pass an ultrasonic wave through a liquid medium the particles will attain some energy and start vibrating vigorously this results into formation of micro bubbles and these bubbles are very unstable eventually the molecules inside those bubbles will lose their energy and collapse in bubbles small amount of molecules require large amount of space compared to normal liquid molecules however when they lose energy the same molecules need smaller space as a result they will collapse and what happens to the space around them a vacuum is created so this results in massive inflow of molecules from the surroundings and this causes implosion and this process is known as cavitation there are various applications of this process first we have uh, emulsification of immiscible liquids as you know the water and oil don't mix but with the help of the cavitation process we would be able to mix them this process is known as emulsification this is also used in various food preparation technique like in making sauces and whipped cream also this process helps in uniform uh, mixing of metals in alloys these are some other high intensity applications of ultrasound now what happens in fatigue testing is we subject a specimen to high strain so that it will be fractured now we can do this by mechanically applying a force or we can also use ultrasound to create the similar effect also high intensity and high frequency ultrasound has a huge amount of energy and this energy can be used for drilling purposes and many materials like glass ceramics and carbide can be drilled using ultrasound similar to cavitation when ultrasound is passed through a solid medium the molecules start vibrating vigorously as a result of this vibration heat is produced by the way of friction and this heat can be used for soldering and welding now let's take a look at non destructive testing the traditional method of testing is you have number of components produced in bulk from those bulk you select few random samples and then subject it to a huge amount of stress and see at which point those component fail this uses high frequency ultrasound now the reason to use ndt is you can assure the product quality and also in traditional method there are chances of accidents while testing the component quality control is easy as you can test each and every component from the bulk as this technique doesn't destroys the component itself while testing also in traditional method you need huge machineries in order to test the components for failure this raises the manufacturing cost but in case of ndt all you need is ultrasound and so the manufacturing cost is low also the tested products are not destroyed unlike the traditional method 
this also reduces the manufacturing cost as all the products produced in bulk can be used it also helps monitoring the production process and helps prevent failure of component now let's take a look at the first numerical why don't you pause this video and try it for yourself and check whether you have got the right answer or not are you ready now let's take a look at the answer we have been given the thickness of the steel bar then pulse arrival time for a defect is given and the pulse arrival time for the other end of the bar is given they have not given us the velocity of the ultrasound but we can calculate by using the pulse arrival time from the other end and the thickness of the bar and using the velocity and the pulse arrival time for the defect we can find out the location of the fault let's see how we can do it this formula is similar to echo sounding the thickness of the bar equals the velocity of the ultrasound multiplied by the pulse arrival time divided by 2 the only unknown here is v so by rearranging it we get v equals 2b upon tb now the fault position can be determined by x equals vtd divided by 2 which is the same formula just different notation we can substitute v as 2b by t so we have x equals td by 2 multiplied by 2b by tb now we substitute td tb and b and plug these values in the calculator and we will get x equals 22.22 cm which is the answer So that's all for this part. I'll see you next time. Till then, bye bye.